There are three types of water on and beneath islands. Salt water, fresh water, and brackish water, a mixture of the two. Each type has its own function and relationship with people, plants, animals, and the environment. The main source of fresh water in tropical islands is rain, some of which soaks into the ground and becomes groundwater. The fresh groundwater forms a lens which rests atop a salty groundwater lens from the ocean. Fresh water flows from inland areas, where most precipitation occurs, to coastal areas where it emerges into springs, wetlands, and the ocean. Along the way, some of the salt water underneath the moving freshwater lens mixes in and forms a transition zone of brackish water. The brackish water in the transition zone is occasionally visible in coastal habitats. Natural places like these are sensitive to changes in the groundwater system. The balance of fresh water increases at low tide or after heavy rains. By contrast, the balance of salt water increases at high tide or after prolonged droughts. Sea level rise, climate change, and increasing freshwater withdrawal for human uses alters this long-term balance and decreases the shape and size of the freshwater lens. The condition of certain wetlands is closely associated with the availability and quality of groundwater. The Pacific Island Network Inventory and Monitoring Program tracks changes in the groundwater of two national parks that contain vital coastal wetland habitats. American Memorial Park on Saipan in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands contains a 28-acre mangrove wetland and a 27-acre estuary. The system's mosaic of wetlands provides special habitat for a variety of birds. Nearby urbanization and industrialization threatens the health of this park's wetlands, which depend on fresh groundwater discharge. Koloko Honokohau National Historical Park on the island of Hawaii protects rare features in coastal lava rock called ankyline pools and native Hawaiian fish ponds. Both provide critical habitat for native species like damselflies, shrimp, and culturally important fish. Urbanization and population growth surrounding the park threaten the groundwater within the park, a potentially serious problem to these aquatic species. This is a groundwater well in Kolokohonokohau National Historical Park. This is the instrument we use to measure groundwater. It measures conductivity, temperature, and depth. Uh, the groundwater well will change with the tides, so the depth will change as well as the temperature. Conductivity can indicate salinity as well as what metals are in our water. We just removed the groundwater instrument from the well. I just hook up the instrument right to my computer so I can look at the data and see a graph of how how the water's going up and down, how the salinity is changing when more salt comes into the well. We're going to redeploy this back into the well and check it again in another three months. How far do we have to put this in until we hit the water? Where's the top? And then we're also gonna do how deep the well is until we hit bottom. Point six feet is at the water level. Groundwater monitoring data is an important tool to assess the overall health of these incredible wetlands and coastal features. And it provides clues on how our islands respond to local, regional, and global changes.